This is Isaac Ferry with Crop Tech Consulting bringing you this week's edition of Technology Tuesday. This week's session focuses on how to tell the difference between good and bad yield monitor calibrations by looking at the maps. This is imperative if we're going to use the yield maps as a base layer in either a variable rate or zone management system. As guys get to the end of the season, they're starting to use their yield maps to make management decisions based upon how their hybrids did, how different zones did, uh, and moving into the new year. Now that we rely on these yield monitors so much, it is, it is so much more important now to make sure that we're starting with good data. All right. That we have calibrated our yield monitor sufficiently and correctly, and that we're making sure we're using good data to be able to make these management decisions going forward. A couple of things you need to evaluate in your yield maps before we start to use them. One of them is we look at a yield map here, and we uh, we have it Krieg. So we're using the Krieging option here in, in SMS, but uh, a lot of different yield monitor softwares or, or yield map softwares can do it. But we start to see these zones show up within the field. And when we look at these, it makes it nice. If we we're going to start to create management zones in the field or if we wanted to pull population back or increase nitrogen rates, we can use some of these management zones in here. We can actually CAD right over top of them and create the, a map based upon this yield map to begin with. Um, but there, there are some issues with it. One, we got to make sure that we have a good yield map to begin with and that we did a good job collecting that data. And what we find is this Krieging tool can distort the yield map data a little bit, but it can definitely hide defects uh, and, and bad data points that, that you may not know existed. So when we go from this Krieging to a single point design where we're actually looking at closer to the raw data that was collected with the combine, we realize a couple of things when we actually look at these maps. All of a sudden this map here looks nothing like the Krieg map that we were just looking at a little bit ago. Um, we do have two different combines in this field and we can see those combines are not calibrated the same. One is consistently reading higher than the other. And if we're going to use this to make management decisions, we need to get those combines scaled, at the very least, into one another. All right. Also, some of these blips and streaks in here are not representative of, of the actual yield conditions. We have a lot of random points, random colors through here. This is a very poor calibration. And then add in the fact that we have two combines within that field. Now, all of a sudden, we have two poor calibrations, and we're using those to make management decisions. All right. So we definitely want to rethink that strategy as we, as we go forward. And by using that Krieging thing, we actually hide this. So, so we don't like to print maps off with, with the Krieg. We like to look at the original data points so that we have a feel for not only where the zones are and where we can identify them, um, but also how good the map is, how reliable is the data. Uh, it gives us a peek into, into somewhat how good of a job they did calibrating. And here we can look at that same field on a different year where they did a good job calibrating, and all of a sudden, boom, it... If we thought this was a good map before because we could see zones like this, a lot of guys don't realize how much better the maps would be if they did a better job calibrating. So we would consider this a below average map. Uh, we would not use this to make a whole lot of decisions unless we had stacked up years of data where we could start to fine tune these zones uh, in a background or a base. This map here with the same field is actually quite a bit different though. It, it allows us to define zones very, very detailed. We can pick out small zones within other zones, and we can start to use this to map out where our management zones are, identify different areas in the field that need attention or may need changes. But by looking at the raw data, we know this is a great map and one that we could actually use in our, in our systems approach or our management decisions going forward. So we try to stay away from the Krieging because it will hide defects in the map itself. Um, and we like to look at that raw data because we'll see any of those, those defects if they do show up. It gives us a whole lot more confidence in a map when we're looking at a map like this than when we're looking at a Krieg map where we're not sure of the data that went into it. All right? There's a couple different reasons that we also don't use Krieg maps, but, but this is definitely one of them. And, and probably one of the main ones as we go forward is, is we want to see that data integrity. We want to see see the actual points that are used to make that map. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Technology Tuesday. Please check our website for more information and other videos.